These first few questions deal with factoring to solve an equation. So we have to review all of our factoring skills, but we also have to deal with the fact that it's an equation. So you want to put it in standard form, meaning you want to set it equal to zero. You might not have all three terms, but the important thing for this equation is that it must equal to zero. As I look at number one and I think about my types of factoring, I want to think about a greatest common factor. What are those both divisible by? 4x. So if I divide both by 4x, I would be left with 5x minus 3. It's set equal to 0. I have factored. Now what do I do next? I set each factor equal to 0. Then just solve for x. and so I have two answers. On the exam you will have an answer blank out to the side and you certainly want to make sure that your answers go in that answer blank. You could just list them or you could say x equals 0 and x equals 5 thirds. On the next problem we still have equal to 0 but this time we have a trinomial. We don't have a greatest common factor. There are several several methods to factor a trinomial and everybody kind of does it a little bit differently, but no matter how you do it, you should get, I believe, 5 times 4 is 20, and then I'm going to use 2 and 3 to get 6. I use the trial and error method, but many people don't. But again, whether you use the grouping method or bottoms up or the box, however you got there, that's okay. But you want to make sure that it's correct by checking the outer terms which would be negative 15 and the inner terms would be negative 8 which add together to make a negative 23x. So again now that I have factored I set each factor equal to 0 and then solve for x. So I'm going to add 2 and I'm going to divide by 5. Here I'm going to add 3 and divide by 4. So again I have two answers. So again you could list them in the given answer blank on the final exam or you again you could say x equals to those. Now how is this next problem different? It's not equal to zero so we can't just start factoring. We have to set it equal to zero so what can I do with this? I have to distribute. So I have 9x squared plus 7x minus 7 3x squared minus 12x. Now I want to get it all to one side of the equal sign and have a zero so I'm going to move everything to the left and that also keeps my x squared terms positive. So I have 6x squared plus 19x minus 7 and you could see that does indeed equal to zero. So now I'm just like number two. Do I have a greatest common factor? No, it's just a trinomial and again many different methods to factor that trinomial. I think that needs to be a plus and that needs to be a minus to get that positive 19 in the middle. So now we set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. Adding 1 dividing by 3, here subtracting 7 and dividing by 2. So again in that answer blank we would make our list or we can say x equals that. The next problem is a word problem and we want to read those directions. It says to set up an equation and solve. You have to have that equation to get any credit. The area of a rectangle is 21. So I do it by drawing a rectangle and trying to remember how do I find the area it's length times width. That's my formula. So the length is one foot less than twice the width. I tell my students whatever is mentioned last let that be x. So maybe your teacher may say you know x equals the width. I do it on a picture. Either way is okay. Now the length is one foot less than twice the width. So if the width is x, twice that is 2x, and one foot less we would subtract 1. Remember that less than you want to subtract at the end. 
it is not 1 minus, but you're subtracting 1. So again, other teachers may have asked you to write it out like this. I do it on a picture. So what do I do with the width and the length? I'm going to multiply it together and I'm going to equal the area, which is 21. So I have these two quantities. It doesn't matter which order. Multiplication is commutative. So in this case, I actually have width times length equals 21. So just like on problem 3, I have to get that 0 on this side. So I have to distribute. And then I'm going to subtract 21 from both sides. So I have that all-important 0. No GCF. So I'm just going to factor. Again, whatever method you've been taught is fine. And I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. So here I'm going to add 7 and divide by 2. Here I'm going to subtract 3. Now remember, my x stands for the width. It's actually a physical quantity. And in this case, it'd be 3 feet. But it's not 3. It's negative 3. Is this possible? No. That is not a solution because x represents a physical quantity of a width of a rectangle. It can't be negative. So let's go back. It says find the dimensions. It doesn't just say find x. So I know x, which is my width, is 7 halves. But I've got to do this. How do I do that? I'm going to substitute in for x what x equals to. Now before you start panicking about those fractions, look at this. Those are going to reduce and you're just left with 7 minus 1, which is 6. So what are those dimensions that they're looking for? Well, let's see. The width is 7 halves feet, and the length equals 6 feet. Make sure you read those directions. You set up an equation, and you find not just x, but in this case, the width and the length.